What's happening, good people? My name is Doug, and this is Thaber Media. Today, we're going to talk about three new features that have rolled out in the past week from Udio to help generate music. These three features, longer context windows, longer maximum song length, and a track trim so you can tweak things out that you don't like. Before we get into that, I've got a question for you. As generative AI gets better at making music and talking, to, talking about things like Suno and Udio, are people really going to be able to tell or are they even going to care that music is AI generated or it's human generated? That's my question to you guys. Drop it in the comments at the end of the at the end of this video. I'll let you know my two cents on that one. Let's jump into this video and talk about these new features. I've jumped over to X, formerly known as Twitter, and I am on the Udio page here where they are talking about these new features they've rolled out to help us create longer, more coherent tracks. Longer tracks, how? Well, first off, they have increased the maximum song length. Used to be around four minutes. It was around about four minutes maximum song length you could get, and that was with 30 second increments, really about 32, 33 seconds of piece of song here, piece of song here. It smushed them together for you pretty seamless it worked really well still does that but now you can 15 minutes worth of these sound clips together to create your epic prog rock song as they talk about here that's just one way they're making things better and i kind of think of these things as like almost um quality of life improvements really because there's no real activity going on as far as on the front end it's not helping you tweak anything obvious it's all happening behind the scenes as you generate more and more and more, and it just puts them together. So you've got one, these longer track lengths, so you're going from four minutes all the way up to 15 minutes now. Second thing they've done to help you get these longer track lengths and just more coherent tracks all together, they've increased the context window. What does that mean, Doug? Well, okay, so the context window, think of it like short-term memory, right? Udio's short-term memory just got a whole lot better. Udio can listen to the song that it's created and remember verse goes like this chorus goes like this it could only do that for up to 30 seconds looking back 30 seconds right it could not remember anything past that 30 seconds so if you had a lengthy verse and you're far far away from the chorus at that point 30 seconds beyond it it it's not going to really remember what that chorus is sounding like. So it may make up something else and you're going to have a fairly inconsistent song. But now it's looking all the way back two minutes. So there's two minutes of memory now, right? That longer context, that two minutes of context will make for more consistent songs. That's going to be very helpful. And then the last thing they talk about, finally, we recently added the ability to select a section of your track to trim before you perform an extension. Well, Doug, what's that mean? Okay, check this out. Here we go. So check this out. This is from their Twitter. You can see here, you can click on selection track, got all the red here. This is what's going to stay in when you trim it. This is this is your keeper. You can zoom this around, find a place you want it. You're gonna have to play with it a little bit. It's kind of difficult to get the waveform. I'd much rather be performing these edits with a, uh, with a waveform. I mean, yes, it is a waveform, but not what I'm used to where I can go in and fine tune and, and drill down, but it's better than nothing. And it does pretty well. But anyway, some really great improvements with Udio. And remember, they're still in beta. As a bonus, we're granting every user 200 credits so they can check out the new features. Pretty cool. Pretty cool with them. So get in there, check these out, go make your epics. Um, Going back to the question I asked at the beginning of the episode, do people care? I do not think so. I think there's a small population that can tell and can, can tell consistently some very fine tuned ears. For me, it's getting more and more difficult to tell what's AI generated and what's not as the sound quality improves, especially with a product like, like Udio. I think with Suno, there are still some artifacts that make it obvious especially in some of the vocals and in audio, it seems like more of the like, like heavier stuff. Some of the distorted stuff just doesn't sound quite right. I can't quite put my, put my, I just can't quite pin down what it is, but it's something that doesn't sound right, but it's not consistent that it sounds wrong or weird in the future. It's going to become more and more difficult to tell. We're going to get to a point though, where it doesn't matter. I think five years ago, a lot of folks were hung up on using amp sims. 
and now I'll look at stuff like neural DSP that's so responsive and sounds so good. I I've got I've got amps behind me and amps over here that that are almost decorations at this point because when I record here in my home studio, I'm using VSTs and I think we're probably going to get to that point with a lot of this stuff with this generative AI audio. It's not going to matter to the general public and eventually it's going to become more and more accepted. I think we still do have some things to work out with copyright. I'm still trying to wrap my head and my position on this is evolving, but I don't think as far as does it matter if we're, if it sounds real, I think we're going to get further and further away from what sounds real and being able to tell is this real or is it not? Anyway, that's my two cents. I'm glad you uh, joined me today. Thanks for stopping by. Give me a like, give me a share, drop some comments. Love talking to you guys. Thanks. Have an awesome day.